Hey folks, it's April 7th and spring has definitely sprung now. We have spiked in air temperature and water temperature both and these fish are finally making a very big push up the creeks. Um, as you can see, we're sitting in a shoal right now. I just, uh, just dragged the boat down. We're gonna be targeting these fish a lot around these shoals and long flats, especially this time of day. I just got off work, so we're sitting around four o'clock right now. Uh, we're at the hottest point of the day, and these fish are probably sitting up on these sand flats, uh, getting pretty warm. So um, the key is to find one that's uh, still in the mood to eat and not in the mood to spawn. Uh, what's weird about this year, though, is we've had an abnormally uh, warm winter, and uh, I figured the spawn might come a week or two earlier, but we're actually sitting about a week or two later in the last two years so it's it's kind of weird i went i went like two and a half weeks without even moving a fish granted i was fishing for half hour or so every time i went out from the bank but i was fishing the right spots for this time of year and wasn't seeing anything so um, i was a little stumped there and was starting to worry that i lost my edge and then uh, we took a trip a couple days ago and all of a sudden boom they're everywhere we saw 17 fish a couple days ago didn't get a lot of footage um but we we saw 17 and several big females and uh, up to the other day i hadn't seen a fish over 36 in the creek uh four of those females we saw a couple days ago were over 40 one of them was in that 45 plus range which is a very big fish for in the creek even for a big spawner coming up this far um we're fishing the same stretch again hope hoping that these fish really didn't push up too much farther than where we found them and if they did hopefully some other ones took their place so uh we're going to get in the boat here real quick as soon as i get everything put together and we're going to get after them so stick with us and see what happens As you can see, I started off the trip with a smaller set of blades. That top half of the stretch is a lot of pocket water in between shoals. Now, when you get it in a shoal setting, it's a good place to get one on a faster paced bait. So your crankbaits, smaller blades, uh, working jigs faster than usual. Um, those fish will line up on those current seams and wait for things to come through the shoals. So that was the idea of fishing the top half. Now I raised that first fish, it was probably 14 to 18 inches, a real small fish. Um, then I saw that spawning pair working its way up, but that was all the activity I had in the top half of the stretch that trip. So for the second half of the trip, the last couple hours of daylight, I decided to fish downstream where I put the boat in, uh, find some bigger water, potentially bigger fish. And um, on the way down, I decided to fish a swim, a swim jig much faster than usual. So I was basically just burning it in like a bucktail.
The wind was really brutal this day. I was solo in that little John boat, all the weight distributed on one side. I was getting blown everywhere. And for that last fish, the wind was actually blowing me into the bank. So I turned the GoPro off during that retrieve. And uh, I was trying to adjust the boat and get back out to the middle of the creek. But when I finally got back out, I continued my retrieve really fast. And I looked down and there was a very large fish for the creek, 43 to 45 inches. Uh, following that swim jig and I just couldn't get her to commit and uh, I remembered that I turned my GoPro off when I was getting blown around So I reached up and turned it on in the middle of the figure eight to get a few turns of that fish Following that swim jig and I just could not get her to commit uh, She did nip at it once and I set the hook and all she did was clamp down on the paddle part of that swim bait So she didn't get any hooks and then she settled down after that Made it to the end of the stretch, raised a couple more nice fish on the way down, but you'll see here that I decided to change baits when I reached the turnaround spot to head back to the truck. I only had about 45 minutes of daylight left, and I just had this gut feeling with the diminishing light and uh, the warmer temperatures we had that day that top water might just be the meal ticket. So I went with my gut, put the top rater on, and fished it the rest of the way back to the truck. was killer oh yeah <sighs> top raider baby that was explosive that's a good fish for the creek that's for sure oh man Took one to the fin on that eat. Let's see if I can get that out easily. There's that one. Whew. All right, first top water fish of the year. And it's a good one. A really good fish for the creek. It's biting me, of course. Yeah, she blew up on that top rider. Get a measurement real quick. The phone's gonna go probably. Something cool about this fish. It's a fish I caught way downstream last year. 40 and a half last year. This year she's 41 and a half. Blind in one eye.
So what was really cool about that whole setup was, well, for one, it was on top water, and anytime you catch a muskie on top water, it's awesome. But the fact that I caught that fish anywhere between between 10 and 12 miles upstream of where I caught her last year, uh, that was just simply amazing. Um, most of the time, you catch a fish multiple times, unless there's a really distinguishable mark on that fish you don't really know if it's the same fish or not but this one had the recipe for identifying this fish she was uh, blind in her left eye she had an injury at some point in her life that um, ended up making that that eye glass over and you could tell by looking at her she was blind in that eye and when I caught her last year she had all those wounds from spawning that they were going to leave a pretty nasty scar and I noticed those scars on that fish's back when I picked her up out of the net. I did, it didn't ring with me until I, I held her on the bump board and went to let her go. Um, it's just crazy to think that I caught that fish again. Um, all the muskies out there, all the muskies that come up in the creek to spawn, I just happened to catch her again and that far upstream. So I, I believe it's not a really a high water event that brought her up there. It's just that she's come up through there all her life to spawn, and I've just never caught her before that. Um, I did get some insight through social media that I may have even found the source of where she became blind. A friend of mine's wife ended up catching a high 30s fish about five years ago in that exact spot. And it was the, uh, I think it was the second week of April when she caught it. And during the fight, the hook got in the eye when it rolled and uh, they figured that it would go blind after that incident and that's about the right time frame for the growth rate of these fish to confirm that that was the same fish and that's where the whole blind in the left eye situation started so and that just takes you to what catch and release really does for these fish um, it lets you go back and possibly catch the same fish again and it lets other people catch it had, she, had they kept that fish i never would have had this story to catch this fish two different times so Catch and release goes a long way, growing big fish and giving other people opportunities at catching potentially the fish of a lifetime.